We're going to move on now to Monday Night Raw. There was a lot of build-up talk going into the show about the next Paul Heyman guy. There was some rumblings out about this next guy being possibly RVD. That's the name that I kept hearing. Actually, RVD's name was trending on Twitter I believe before Monday Night Raw even started. So a lot of people assumed that it was going to be RVD. I don't think that there was anyone in the world who could have guessed that it was who it actually turned out to be. The man formerly known as Michael McGillicuddy, the son of Mr. Perfect, he's going by a new name, and that name is Curtis Axel. What did you think about the debut of Curtis Axel on Monday Night Raw? That was really stupid. That was like... I, I, I appreciate the fact that we're getting a new star, but apparently he's like 35, and he wasn't very good in the Nexus. And the thing that put him off for me was the promo he cut on NXT. The uh, This is the genesis of the beginning of the genesis. If you've ever seen that promo, just type in uh, Michael McGillicuddy NXT promo, or uh, I think the, uh, that might have been the only promo he cut. I don't blame him, but a horrible mic worker. That's probably why they gave him Paul Heyman, but... He probably could have done better. I, I would have liked to have seen Antonio Cesaro. I think that would have probably worked better seeing as how Paul Heyman's always like the little guys who come up from the independent circuits and stuff like that. And to have him in the same group as CM Punk, that probably would have been better. But McGillicuddy or Kurt Axel, Kurt Angle, whatever the hell he wants to call himself now. Yeah. Um, and for him, he got bitched out by Triple H. Like Triple H caught the case of uh, can't put people over so, uh Oh, Kurt come Axel. on. No, no, no. Come on now. Come on. He like dude, he made him look like a punk. At the he end made of the, him. We still have to take into account that at the end of the day, this dude is a rookie. No matter what his wrestling but pedigree come on. is. That's you look the at the debuts. You look at the debuts. Austin, when he came in as ringmaster, it was not like that. Rocky Madbia, it was not like that. Kane, no. If you want to debut somebody big, you have to make it seem like a really big deal. And this was like, whatever. And I don't even think the crowd even really reacted. They probably don't remember. Well, I remember this was McGillicuddy. Some of them probably did. But, you know, this wasn't. And for him to smack him in the face, you know, I understand you're a baby face. He's a heel. But it didn't, it didn't help that uh, Axel sounded like an idiot when he spoke. My thing is, is that, you know, you say he's a rookie. I think that's the problem. That's why we don't have stars. That you know, them starting guys at the bottom of the barrel and saying work your way up is the reason why guys like Kofi Kingston are sitting in the mid card for ten years. You know, them they need to debut people where they want to push them. They need to debut people in the spot that is not the bottom of the barrel and say pay your dues. It's a huge issue with the WWE. It's why when people were up in arms about Tensai beating guys last year. I said, well, I don't really like the gimmick either, but I like this approach. I like the idea of if you want a guy to be a main eventer, you make him a main eventer, and you don't take six years to finally say, oh, he's over, and by the time the fans don't care. But then again, you have to remember, Sheamus, that didn't really help him, Del Rio. They just shot him in the main event scene. It's a double-edged sword. You don't push him too quickly, but you know we've seen with debuts, they did this a lot uh, back in the day. You know, Guys like uh, Razor Ramon would debut in – big profile stuff it would and eventually they'd fall into place you know he fell he debuted upper mid card you know came off as a big deal and they found a spot for him in the intercontinental title picture and it worked really well you know to to just say this guy is a rookie and he's at the bottom because he's a rookie that's not how you start guys off that's not how you make guys a big deal you make guys a big deal by telling the fans a big deal i'm not saying everybody comes in and wins the title within three weeks that's not my plan of attack but to just have everybody come in and be your rookie. I'm Triple H. You're gonna look like a bitch now. Is discouraging, and I think it's brought it's, it's been a problem for I don't know since probably the last star they made. What Randy Orton in '05? I mean, I think we recognize both that there is an issue. Like we recognize the common problem, but maybe I'll take a different approach to it. Like you say, debut guys where you want them to be. I say it doesn't necessarily have to be that a person spends six years in the fucking mid card. Like 
it's not written in stone anywhere saying that they have to pay their dues for 35 years. Like, if you wanted to, you could get it in the fans' mind that, hey, this guy is working their way up. And you mentioned Kofi Kingston. They actually did that with him also. But who the hell knows what happened there when he was in the feud with Randy Orton. He was in the mid-card then, but he was slowly working his way towards the main event. And the train just went completely off the tracks and God knows why. But it they've shown in little moments like that, it is possible. They just have to sustain it. And I'm not going crazy over Triple H slapping Curtis Axel because I'm not necessarily saying that he's a rookie, therefore he's at the bottom. It's just that it would make sense for a guy like Triple H and all that we know of Triple H to approach him in that manner. Because if you notice on, on Raw, he uh, he said, um, what did he say to... Uh, Curtis Axel, he said something like, hey, kid, let the, the adults are talking. So basically, he was looking at him like he's some kind of chump because his main issue was with Paul Heyman. And maybe this is in kayfabe. Maybe I'm thinking too much about it, though. But it's kind of as if Paul Heyman is building this guy up, maybe to be more than what he actually is. Like, he's just pumping this image into the fan's mind. So maybe that kind of, like, factors into it also but i think it was a great choice for paul Heyman to be the mouthpiece for this guy say what you want about um curtis axel but paul Heyman did make him look like a million bucks like i bought into it like i know who michael mcgillicuddy is i remember that horrible promo you were talking about david but i'm always willing to give somebody a second chance and like i said paul Heyman, he was effective enough for me to buy into what he was selling with Curtis Axel, and it does make me interested to see what comes next with this guy, to see if it actually is just Paul Heyman pumping him up, or if WWE is really serious about giving this guy a push. Well, I was almost buying into it until he was sitting on his ass like a two-year-old child in timeout. But then that also plays into what I was saying about Paul Heyman, because uh, you could see like Paul Heyman yelling at him to get up because he's he's molding this dude into the image of what he wants him to become in moments like that they're subtle but you could still see that paul Heyman he's being a coach to this guy and he's basically trying to mold him into a badass he's not exactly there yet but maybe we'll see if he gets there eventually he won't <laughs> sorry only one endorsement per show wwe <laughs> I mean, hell, if you're already on the train, why not just continue on to the next station? You're you're there. I mean, it you you can't do much damage with giving WWE a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. I, you've done it already. I no. Nope. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> well, okay then. Alrighty then. <laughs> 